A police affidavit says after Craig said good morning to Hamlin, he followed her into an elevator, trapped her, and demanded to go inside her apartment. That was the moment that fight or flight kicked in. Police say Hamlin punched Craig in the face, grabbed her by the shoulder and collarbone and near her neck. All I could do was throw my coffee over my shoulder, which startled him. That was Democratic Congresswoman Angie Craig from Minnesota, who was unfortunately assaulted in the elevator of her DC apartment building. Now, in last Thursday's incident, a police affidavit said that the perpetrator demanded that Craig let him into her apartment shortly after 7 a.m. so that he could use her bathroom and then proceeded to attack her after she refused. The experience has left her wondering why the perpetrator who does have a pretty long criminal record and is a repeat offender is free to assault women like this. In fact, here are some more details on what happened. Angie Craig says she spotted Kendron Hamlin, a man police believe to be homeless, in the lobby of her apartment complex last week. According to police, he was acting erratic, as if he was under the influence of an unknown substance. The encounter happened just after 7 in the morning when Craig bought her morning coffee. A police affidavit says after Craig said good morning to Hamlin, he followed her into an elevator, trapped her, and demanded to go inside her apartment. That was the moment that fight or flight kicked in. Police say Hamlin punched Craig in the face, grabbed her by the shoulder and collarbone and near her neck. All I could do was throw my coffee over my shoulder, which startled him. Um, but as soon as he regained, he came back toward me. And again, it was only until we got to the floor the elevator was headed to that I was able to escape. When police tracked down Hamlin, they say he kicked an officer and bit a detective. Now he has been taken into custody and uh, he's being held without bond. Uh, I have more details about him in just a moment, but Cenk, I wanna give you an opportunity to, to weigh in. Something that drives me crazy about all politicians is nothing's ever important until it happens to them. Thousand percent. Okay, so <laughs> Thousand percent. Okay, like crime wasn't important for Democrats. They were like, oh, it's no big deal, no big deal. As Republicans used, that was their main go-to move, right, during the elections. And they realized it late too, because they didn't care either until they realized, oh, it might be a political advantage, right? And so the Democrats are like, no big deal, no big deal. All of a sudden, she gets attacked. She's like, did you know how bad crime is? Yeah, yeah, we do know. And that's why we've been trying to do something about it. Because the progressive position is justice, justice for everyone, including victims of crime. We don't want people out there getting punched in the face and dragged into their apartments because that's crazy, okay? So, we'll t look, guys, there's fentanyl and meth everywhere. So, they're like, oh, he was acting erratic on a drug of some sort. Of course, of course. It's a giant number of people that act that way, unfortunately. And we've got to have an actual plan for it, but no one does. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, there is a problem, I mean, and we all know it, right? We see it in the numbers of Americans who die every year from drug overdoses. There's a very real drug problem in this country. It's certainly overrepresented in the homeless population. Some of these drugs, including what's referred to as biker meth, makes them paranoid in some cases, hallucinate and carry out acts of violence under the influence of that drug. Now, in this case, I don't know if he was under the influence of a substance. They're speculating that. I think it's important to be clear that it's speculation. We don't have um, any confirmed details on whether or not he was on any drugs. We do know, though, that he has uh, a history of being violent, and that has led to uh, the lawmaker wondering, well, why is he allowed to be out harming other people? I'll talk about that in just a moment, but here are the details. So Kendrick Hamlin, 26 years old, is due to appear in federal court in Washington on Monday to face charges that he struck Craig in the face with a closed fist when she refused to let him into the apartment. And as I mentioned earlier, he's being held without bond. Now, a CBS News review of court records shows nearly a decade worth of criminal cases involving him. Um, he is, you know, there have been instances where he has, you know, gotten physical with uh, police officers and things like that. According to a police affidavit, for instance, last November, Hamlin was spotted by Capitol Police lying on the ground on a sidewalk near the Capitol and taken to a hospital for medical care. The affidavit said Hamlin became combative with police while leaving the hospital and bit one officer, spit blood on others, and kicked another in the groin. 
Court filings indicate Hamlin pleaded guilty in the case and was sentenced to serve 35 days in jail. He was scheduled to be released about two weeks before the alleged attack against Craig. But look, guys, for anyone who thinks like, okay, well, maybe it's because DC passed some sort of criminal justice reform and that's having a negative impact, that's actually not the case in DC. So the city council in DC had tried to reform their criminal code, which hasn't been reformed in over a century. I'm not kidding. The the mayor, Muriel Bowser, vetoed it, and then they voted on it again in the city council to override her veto. However, since it's DC and since Congress has oversight of DC, House Republicans blocked the reformed criminal code. So if you wanna pin this on criminal justice reform, that hasn't happened at all in DC. Yeah. But it does beg the question, what do you do when you have someone who's a repeat offender who carries out acts of violence and harm people? Yeah, so guys, there's, uh, let's go through the wrong answers. So right wing will look at this and go race, Oh, Jesus Christ, no, that's, White people are also on a dangerous meth, fentanyl, etc. And you see it all over the country. And in fact, unfortunately, it's a majority white because it's a majority white country. And then you'll have libertarian leftists, that's apparently a thing now, okay, who will say, no, uh, these people deserve hashtag freedom. What? Like, no, no, we shouldn't put them in prison. No, we should definitely put them in prison. Okay, that's a, it's a weirdly libertarian right wing position pretending to be a left wing position, okay? So no, we don't agree to that. Can I just weigh in on that real quick, Cenk? So just to be fair and generous to, to what their interpretation is, they say, no, the, the criminal justice system, especially the carceral system is not the way to go. They believe in addressing root causes and restorative justice. But root causes are not being addressed. And what do you do when acts of violence occur as we work out the root causes, you get what I'm saying, like. And guys, this restorative justice is like you're you're projecting your mental wellness onto others. Okay, you think that oh, if I just get him in a room, I'll talk him out of it. No, if you get him in a room, he's gonna punch you in the face because he's either high or he's got some other mental health issues. Normally, normal people don't do that. Okay. So you need to get him other help. I'm not saying, oh, you crush him, you punish him. No, but we gotta help him. So like when you put him into the system, but you gotta have him in the system. You can't say, oh, let him roam around, because that's crazy, okay? So, but once you get him in the system, if it turns out strict, give him mental, give him treatment for drugs, give him health treatment, right? If it turns out it's a mental health problem, give him mental health treatment. But you have to have him confined. You can't have him doing that to other people. So then uh, what is the right answer? And then so then right wing will say don't do police reform. No, guys, police beating the crap out of or, uh, or shooting unarmed black people have nothing to do with this. Those are two separate issues. Police don't have to assault everyone in vicious ways in order to get their job done. So you could reform that and still say yes, people should go to prison and we should have police. So when the, some portions of the left say defund the police, I don't get it. It's if you mean what I just said, mental health, uh, drug addiction, etc., facilities, great, and we agree. But don't call it defund the police, because people think that means that we don't have any police, and that's crazy. Okay, so I. Yeah. But one more thing, Anna. Sure, sorry. go ahead. Yeah. Look, but the bottom line is whether left, right, whatever. I haven't seen anybody with a plan to actually get dangerous people off the streets and then get them to the right avenue. Yes, hey, to right. reform them, to, to rehabilitate them, exactly. So like, look, the, the those who are concerned about prisons have the right concerns. The prisons do not rehabilitate folks. Oh, the prisons are a disaster, so totally. They absolutely need to be reformed to rehabilitate folks. First of all, I do think that there's value in taking people who pose a safety risk to others out of the public. Okay, that keeps people safe. But at the same time, that doesn't mean you brutalize the individual. We should focus on rehabilitating them. Right now, the, the focus is we need to close prisons. <laughs> no, no, we need to reform our prisons so they're not hell holes that torture people. So people can actually go there and be rehabilitated. And when they get out, they're able to transition back into society and live hopefully meaningful, prosperous lives, right? That's what we want. And that is what we like, need. 
It's not like we don't know how to do this. There are other countries in the world. Norway has these amazing prisons and the right wing would lose their minds. Oh, It's too comfortable, it's too this. I even look at it and I go, I don't know, that looks like it might be too comfortable. But guess what, the recidivism rate it works. is so low. I mean, it is a fraction of ours. That means people that are in jail commit less crime later. That means we're safer, right wing, that means we're safer, okay? So let's do the things that we know work. And by the way, Norway also doesn't go, yeah, just let them run around, see what happens. No, they get them into a facility and they get them the appropriate help or by the way, the appropriate punishment depending on what the circumstance is. That's a rational way to do it. That's why their system is infinitely better than ours. But God forbid anyone should do anything rational in this country. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.